being an INTA committee member obviously revolves around meeting objectives of the association and committee objectives, but isn't it much more than that? Like, what are the expectations for the annual meeting and the leadership meeting? Well, it is much more than that, both in terms of the expectations and in terms of what you can get out of it. You know, uh, because a huge amount of planning, um, finalizing work product, and kind of checking in on the work of the committee and meeting the objectives is accomplished at the annual meeting and leadership meeting. It's really important if you're going to have a, an engaged participatory role with the committees to attend the annual meeting and the leadership meeting uh, so you can be involved in that committee work. But, you know, as you say, the committee work is a lot more. It's about being with colleagues who have an interest and an expertise in a particular area. You can share information, you can benchmark. Um, it's a great opportunity to develop contact and even business. As you know, the committees are a mix of corporate members and associate members. Um, it really does provide great leadership opportunities uh, within INTA, but also leadership training for uh, leadership skills that you can use outside INTA. Uh, and uh, just, uh, I think, a lot of advantages in that working group of a committee focused on a common topic um, that are both substantive in terms of the subject matter, but also from a professional networking uh, experience really at the heart of how INTA works. Is there an expectation for committee members to attend annual meeting and leadership meeting? Well, there is an expectation for committee members to be actively engaged in the work of the committee. I think that's made clear uh, when you are invited to join a committee. And so much of that work does happen at the annual meeting and the leadership meeting. Those are significant checkpoints in the two-year committee term to kind of see where is the work, uh, how is it progressing, have the objectives changed a little, have things come up in the IP world where maybe the committee needs to shift its focus. So if you are going to be an engaged member of the committee, which you are expected to be, the annual meeting and the leadership meeting are really important points in your committee term to engage and get and contribute the full value of your membership in the committee. So you've climbed through the ranks been on many committees, um, <laughs> been very involved, obviously leading to your presidency. So how has attending committee meetings in person previously, now virtually, how, how would you say that's contributed to your personal and professional growth? Uh, enormously. Uh, I'll start with maybe what might be the most obvious, which is how it's contributed to my path within INTA. Uh, it is, um, you know, a fundamental training ground, as it were, to be in the committee, to understand how the organization works, to make contact with other members, with staff, uh, and to demonstrate your commitment, your expertise. And so doing that on committees and really being engaged in a way where the committee leadership and the INTA staff can see uh, your commitment, the value you bring, and that you will be an engaged INTA member uh, really lays the foundation for uh, a path forward in leadership within INTA. But I think more than that, you know, it really helped my professional growth outside of INTA uh, as an IP lawyer, as a brand professional, so much of what I experienced within the INTA committees in terms of project management, leadership, um, critical thinking about IP issues are all things I took, uh, you know, to my IP day job. And I think it's been really, really useful. I remember as a very junior person on a committee working on uh, an amicus brief INTA submitted to the Supreme Court. And my name was actually on the brief and, you know, for a young litigator to have their name on a brief going to the Supreme Court was a huge highlight. And that wouldn't have happened without the committee work. 
And then I think the last benefit, but not the least, is again, those connections you make um, within the INTA community. And that's something that you can't do as fully if you're just being passively copied on emails. You really have to engage with people, talk with them, get to know them. And those professional relationships that I started forming more than 20 years ago at INTA um, still exist and are incredibly valuable and important to me today. So when, when the INTA nominating committee looks at members, when we start a new committee term and we look to place people on committees, is, the, is it a consideration, the activity, the participation of past committee members? Does that have a role to play in placement? It, it plays a huge role and it, and it really has to because we're starting from a place where we have many more applications than we have positions. And so we have to work on trying to determine who is going to help best move forward the association's work, which is what the committees really are all about. Um, as immediate past president next year, I'll be chairing the nominating committee. And one of the things that we are going to look at is how active was done on the prior committee terms. Were they just a name on an email distribution list, or did they participate, engage, and show the kind of um, commitment and contribution that are going to help the organization achieve its goals and also reflect well on them in terms of further positions. And that can be reflected in comments from the staff, comments from the committee leadership, but also attendance at these key meetings, the leadership meeting and the annual meeting, where so much of the strategic work of the committees is done, uh, is another indication of commitment level and the fact that this is going to be someone who's engaged in their next INTA committee role. So the annual meeting and leadership meeting, though, goes beyond just the committee meetings. What else really should committee members take advantage of at the virtual meeting that's coming up? You know, um, I I'm seeing the developing program for the meeting and it blows me away every time I look at it because there's always more and more and more and more. Um, so, uh, you know, I think there have been challenges in taking this meeting virtual, but there have also been opportunities. And some of that is about really um, more unconventional ways to network through the digital platform, to develop business. Um, the content is really coming together in a way that's super impressive, including some kind of hot off the presses content to deal with recent events and the way the world is today. Um, there's a lot of flexibility uh, in terms of people from around the world being able to access content in their time zones or on their schedule. Um, and I think there's a lot of opportunity to kind of connect, uh, as, as always, at INTA meetings, but now in a kind of innovative way with people from, you know, 70 different countries and all over the world. And I think as we all have learned over the last few months, um, remote or virtual or digital connection might not be the same as connecting in person but it's all the more necessary until we can do so again safely. And I think INTA is planning some really exciting things in terms of networking, business development, and collaboration in the virtual space. Any last minute words for committee members as we look toward November? I hope to see you all in the virtual annual meeting, leadership meeting. Uh, it's really important that the INTA community can come together uh, to continue that hallmark of INTA, the community, the networking that we have with each other, to support the association, uh, to move the substantive work forward. Uh, and I think everybody is going to be really pleased with what we have to offer. So I look forward to seeing you all there, even if it's virtual for this year.